And now, here's your host of Shaping Success, Wes Tankersley. What is up, everyone? Welcome to Shaping Success. I'm your host, Wes Tankersley. Today, you got me again, just me, just me rambling. And we're going to talk about some stuff that um, has been on my mind. You know, it's kind of the way it is. Um, a lot of times um, we talk about things that inspire us and things that um, continue to help us in our growth, no matter what that may be. And things get revealed to you, you know, slowly but surely, and you start to figure things out. And as you continue to work on being in that positive headspace and building something of your own and being your own person, you realize more and more that you can't count on other people to create your success. And I think that that's a big thing that you have to understand. I started this podcast about four years ago um, to, you know, have, I had different aspirations and found out that I really had these entrepreneurial tendencies that I want to one day be my own employer, you know, one day do something for myself, one day um, build something that is mine that I can be proud of, that I could possibly pass down onto my kids if they want it. Um, and there's a lot of things that go into that. And I've been having conversations with a lot of people lately and realizing some things. You know, things that I already knew, but that just kind of cements the idea. And things, you know, people talk about, um, you know, like visualizing and, and you have to see it and you have to believe it. And that's really what it is. You have to believe that it's going to happen or it's never going to happen. So you have to be willing to put in the work to understand that in order to be successful in whatever you're doing, you have to believe in it. You can't go on thinking, hey, I'm going to do this and think that it's not going to happen. Um, my YouTube, for instance, yesterday, it was funny because this happens from time to time. We get these people with hateful comments. Um, and I'm just excited to see, hey, there's a comment on a YouTube short, right? Like that's that's one of the things that you get into. You're like excited. All right, we got a comment. Cool. Because those comments, I like to respond to them. I like to get feedback. I like to have information and things like that. And it was revealed to me that I don't need a studio based on my last episode. They watched a short and it's like, I don't need a studio because I get no views. And I was sitting there thinking, you know, what I would do before is like, I would go look at this guy's profile, kind of see what he's got going on, kind of figure out, you know, why he would say the things that he's saying to me. Doesn't even know me, sees a clip and then creates that based on that. It was kind of funny. Now I see those comments and I delete them because I don't need them. I don't need to see them and I don't want to give them the time of day. And um, it was just funny because I started thinking about that and how long I've been doing this and what it's all about. And I am almost 250 episodes in. I've been doing it for four years. I've interviewed a lot of great people. And this morning I get an email from YouTube that says, Congratulations, you just had 175,000 views. And it just cemented the fact that this guy told me yesterday I don't get any views, but he doesn't know me. And I got 175,000 views on my YouTube channel since I started it. That's a lot of people. That's 175,000 people whose attention was on me. They saw what I was doing. Good or bad, they saw it. And... When you think about it that way, it brings it into perspective, right? It brings it into the thought that you do have a voice. What you're doing, what you are saying is important to someone, right? And I have to think, 175,000 views, you know, maybe not everyone liked me, but what about the 75,000? Like, say it wasn't 75,000. They got 100. Say only 5,000 like me. That's 5,000 people that I got the opportunity to be in front of to try and push my message out that success is generated by you, that you are in charge of that. And things happen. Like, it gets, and I, I, I truly believe this because I think that a lot of people don't think that things happen for a reason, but I see it happening at a time when you need it, when people are like reaching out. So, I had someone reach out to me 
about a sponsorship in my email. And this happens from time to time. I get random emails from people like, hey, we'll promote your podcast for 8,000 more views for $200. Or, hey, would you like to be a sponsor of this or whatever? People DM you. Hey, you have a great Instagram profile. We'd love to have you here and here and here. So you're like very um, choosy in what you you read, like you give your attention to, oh, this is a scam. I'm not doing this. I'm not going to continue to interact with the person. Delete, 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 delete. You delete about a hundred of them. Every once in a while you get one that, you know, you're like, oh, maybe this might be legit. So I got an opportunity to, to, um, be sponsored by a company and you'll see, we'll talk about it later on, but they basically wanted to pay me, you know, $150 and give me, you know, 15 of uh, 15 samples of their product to drink it on an episode and um, talk about it, right? And I'm going to do it because I they sent me three of them and I tried them and I thought they were good and it is what it is. So if I don't believe in it, I wouldn't do it. They asked, you know, they're like, hey, we want, we do it this way. We're going to send it to you. We're going to find out if you like it. If you think you could do it, then we'll talk. And so they did that. They sent it to me. I tried it. I liked it. And then they reached back out and said, all right, we're willing to do this if you're willing to do that. And then we'll reevaluate after we see what comes of that. It's like, sure. Awesome. I'll take it. So anyway, that that happened. But then in the follow-up email, they're like, well, we need you to do this. All right. So we need you to mention it in in an episode organically, you know, kind of in the middle of it but we need you to be in person. Can you do an in-person interview? And as everyone knows who listens to this or watches this or whatever, they know that I am, I can't really do an in-person interview right here. I could, it would take a lot of work to figure out how to make it look right and all that stuff where I'm at right now. But, you know, downstairs off the garage, there is a space created for me to be a studio, but it's not done yet. You know, the studio I don't need because I don't get any views. (laughs) Um, So it's down there. It's not done yet. I need to get it finished. And once that's finished, then I'm going to start doing in-person interviews. I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to make it happen. And I also could do it. And, but anyway, I could do it somewhere else, but we'll talk about that in a minute here. So, um, I started thinking about this. I was running this through my mind. What could I do? How could I do that? I can't really do it here. Where are my resources? Who do I know? What can I do? And a really good friend of mine, um, Matt Todd, who has been on the show before and has his own podcast and is an entrepreneur, kind of like I'm trying to be like someone who's trying to build something on their own, which is really, you know, taking that risk and being able to do that and betting on yourself, right? Well, he has a studio and I've been on his podcast before and his studio is really cool. It's really set up. He has a house that he rents out, but he took like the RV garage or part of the garage and said, you know, you can have this garage, but this one's mine. And the house is for rent, but I built the studio in here. So he has a side entrance. You go in there and you sit down and he's built out this awesome studio inside here. And I'm like, I bet Matt would do this. I bet Matt would let me record in his studio. I bet we could figure out something to make it work. And, and then they want another one too. So they want two of these. And I told him, I said, you know, they go, you normally do stuff on zoom. We would like to be in person, blah, 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 blah. I was like, well, I could probably pull off one in-person one, but I'm probably going to have to do it on Ecamm right here, like what I do here um, for another one. And I thought of the people that, you know, and then I thought, well, Jay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reach out to Jay and see if Jay's willing to do it. I'll see if they're willing to send him some of the product and then we can do it because it all has to fall into place in order to make it happen. We'll try the product in an interview. I'll get to have a conversation with Jay, which I love to do, and we'll try it there. And reached out to him. He was good with it. And we're going to do it. But I knew I had to make those connections and figure this stuff out before. And I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to call Matt today and I'm going to talk to him about it. Cause I need to get that one ironed out first. Cause they want a date. Like they're giving you, they're sending you money, they're sending you product and they want a date of when you're going to post the episode. So I had to figure that out and I figured it out. I mean, these are all things that you probably have to figure out when you have a sponsor. Little, you know, I've probably, I've never really had a sponsor. Like I've had, I help my friends. Um, promote their products, but they don't pay me. Um, I did have uh, Terry Levelin when we had the Chevy um, ad running. 
she paid me like 20 bucks to, which is great. Cause like, it's this, this is one of those things where everyone's like, I'm going to make money podcasting right off the bat. I'm going to make money podcasting. That's all there is to it. Like I'm going to do one episode and someone's going to hear it and they're going to want to sponsor me. It's not the way that it works, but the people who continue to do what they do continue to do it because they love it or because they feel like it's really worth it and it's going to be something someday and continue to push it out and continue to fight are the ones who are in it for the long haul. A lot of podcasts die after three episodes because like the first one, you're like, I got a podcast and you tell everyone and everyone listens to it. And you get like, I don't know, 50 downloads. And you're like, all right, we got 50 downloads on our first episode. Second one rolls around. And I've seen this in these podcast groups. Second one rolls around and they're like, oh, well, I got, I got 25 this time. Third one rolls around, they get like three listens and they're, I don't know what's going on. Is there something wrong with my pot? You know, like it's, it's this, 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 and this. And they don't understand that it's not going to be that way forever. I mean, there's people like Joe Rogan, Gary Vee, Lewis Howes who have this huge following, Grant Cardone. They got this huge following and they're going to get these people to come no matter what. Adam Carolla, like they have people, they have a fan base that they've created, but we're just regular everyday people. And we don't have that fan base created yet. And we have to create that. And we have to do something different. And we have to bring value and do something significant in order to make people want to listen. So they get to that third episode and they're done. I'm not doing this anymore. It's not worth it. It's not getting me anything. It's not getting me a sponsorship. Because the first question is always, how can I make money doing this? And if you go into it wanting to make money, you got to understand that that's not going to happen. That's not really, I mean, it may. It's, it's, nothing is impossible. It may. But um, it's difficult to walk into something and make money right away. So understand that. If you're thinking about starting a podcast and you think you're just going to be some famous person because you see Joe Rogan doing what he does. He did a lot of work on other places in order for that to happen. So anyway, back to the story. So I, I knew I was going to reach out to Matt and I'm like, I'm going to call him. I hadn't got a chance to call him yet, but this is kind of why I believe in like visualizing and knowing and, and understanding and kind of like karma, um, manifesting, right? Like you manifest that thing into happening and I knew what I was going to do. So I'm walking into home Depot yesterday, first thing in the morning before I meet with a realtor friend of mine and to get this tool to adjust the sprinkler system on my house. And I got the tool. And I'm walking back to go find some blue tape because I need to get some blue tape. And there's Matt at the Home Depot that I'm at at the same time I'm at. And we get to discuss what I needed to discuss with him. And I didn't have to call him. Like, it just happened. And I think that a lot of people were like, oh, well, that's just by chance, whatever. But I don't think so. I don't agree with that. I think that things happen when you put yourself in the right situation and you put yourself where you need to be, it's going to happen. But you have to believe, and I believe, but you have to believe that it's going to happen. And I think that that's the biggest thing. Like a lot of people will just say, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Or they'll give up. And there has been like, I, I feel like they're like signs. There are things that just keep pushing me when I think that maybe it's not going to work out. Um, I had, you know, I know I've talked about Jake Rose in the past, but he came on the podcast and we talked about new medicine and his country music. And he did that not even knowing who the hell I was. I reached out to him on Instagram. Some guy messaged you on Instagram. You don't even know. You're semi-famous. You got a rock band. You've toured the world. You've done some really cool shit. And this guy reaches out to you. He's no one. Like you got these weird fans all the time. Maybe he thinks I'm a weird fan still. I don't care. Um, but I was able to interview him. He comes on, we do the interview. And then I start like, I listen to New Medicine a lot, but then I started dissecting more and more and more. And then he starts coming out with these songs and he's talking about how in the interview that he just was never, you know, he was, he was never smart enough to quit. Like he's just not going to quit. Like there, he has no quit in him. You know, farm kid had this idea you know, played guitar, had a band out of high school, started touring in a band. Like it's, th there was no quit in that. And when I first started listening to new medicine, about a year later, they put out a second album and then all of a sudden they're done. They broke up or whatever. 
And you don't know the struggles that those people are going through. But when they broke up, there was a lot of things that happened. The label dropped him, all these things. And it's funny because he just came out with this song this morning, like right when, right when I was going through some of these things, these doubts and all that stuff in my mind, that kind of cemented what I think. And you think that things are perfect and they are what they are when you see what's going on. But there are doubts in your mind about whether you're doing things are right, right or wrong being the positive person there is always these thoughts in your mind about negative things they do hop up it's a it's a choice to try and find the good in, a, in the bad but he's talking about that in that song um never know is it just came out today so um but if you listen to that and you listen to what he's talking about it's the same thing it's like people told me i couldn't do this people told me i couldn't do that people said that i was never going to make it i should give up he was doing you know, painting houses. He was doing all these things to just kind of keep this dream alive and never quit. And now, you know, being independent and not by signed by a label and not being tied by these people has made it so that he can do so many things that he didn't think he could do when he was tied to a label. So good things happen when they're supposed to. And I think the biggest thing that you have to do is learn to be patient because and when I'm telling you this, like when I'm saying this, I'm thinking this, like this is me talking about it like you have to be willing to be patient because if you're not then it'll never happen if you give up too soon it doesn't happen if something doesn't go your way and you think i'm just gonna quit it doesn't happen you still have that mentality in your mind like i've thought about quitting this podcast multiple times i talk to jay every you know once or twice a month about it it's like ah dude am i really doing what i should be doing and then i go back to the message and back to the meaning and back to the reason why I do it. And I realize that I have no other way than to just keep doing it. So that's the message today. Do not quit on your dreams because you because something doesn't go the way that you want it to. Um, even when something goes wrong, you still have the ability to correct the situation. Even when, like we talked about before, getting off, you know, taking that lateral step to move forward, right? Because you're trying to go forward, you're going forward, you're going forward, and then all of a sudden, boom, you get knocked back by something else. Lateral step, get off to the side, get out of, like, say there's like a freaking, I'm looking at a dumpster outside. So you're running down the road and there's a dumpster in front of you. And you can go left or you can go right, but you can't go straight. What do you do? You go left and then you go straight again and you just keep going. So those bumps in the road, those obstacles, those things, they're going to be there. But what really defines your character is how you're going to deal with that. I could quit doing this right now. There's no shame in that. But I don't have that in me. And I am thankful for the people that I have met and the connections that I have made and the situations that this has put me in to be able to be a better person. And no one can stop me except for me. So when someone says you don't get any views and you look at that and you're like, that guy doesn't know me. He doesn't know who I am. He doesn't know the work that I put in. How can someone who doesn't know who I am judge me? I don't need to worry about it. And it's hard to say that because in the back of your mind, you're like, do I really get no views? And you're like, screw that. You have to you have to bet on yourself. You have to believe in yourself. So uh, I want to say thank you to my patron, Nikki Pavlovich. If you would like to support on Patreon, go over and hit that up. Uh, you can go to westangersley.com, hit the link up for Patreon, and go join that. Um, we've got the Move Forward shirts. Um, I've sold five or six of them lately. Um, I have some limited colors and things like that. If I can sell out what I have, we'll add another color. Um, Currently, we have some black, some blue, some green. Um, the way that the shirts work, though, is like I have to prepay for them, and then you order them, and then I send them out. So um, if you would like to get a shirt, a Move Forward shirt, because that's, you know, that's what it's about. Like I said, getting around those obstacles and keep going forward. No matter what, don't stop. Um, they're really great shirts. Um, very comfortable, next level, suede very nice stuff. Um, if I didn't wear it, I wouldn't sell it. So, um, check it out. Hit me up. If you want one, DM me, 
uh, we're trying to work on getting store up. We've been working on getting it up, but we can do PayPal or Venmo and, and get it shipped out to you. And remember, as you go out, you know, find your success and just continue to move forward towards that goal. It's only going to be worse if you quit. It's not going to happen if you quit. Till next time, I challenge you to find the shape of your success.